Okay, hi, it's Captain Larry in California. It's, uh, golly, it's the middle or toward the end of April 2020. A few months ago, we uh, started out with this Valiant uh, with the basic uh, preliminary cleaning. And uh, there will be more cleaning done on this transmitter, but I'm um, going to turn off the radio here. <coughs> Um, uh, right now what I'm doing is going through and uh, putting some penetrating uh, lubricant on the controls. Uh, and I'm using my favorite product here which is called TriFlow uh, which contains uh, some silicone and leaves some Teflon uh, lubricant, uh, dry lubricant behind and it's also uh, pretty good at uh, uh, dissolving, uh, <coughs> you know, crud like old uh, dried grease and stuff. So what I've been doing is um, lubricating these bezels. Each one of these controls goes through a little ferrule in the uh, in the panel, and they get uh, they get crudded up and stiff. So I've been going through with the uh, <coughs> triflow and. <coughs> giving it a little shot and don't worry about getting it on the panel this is a, a dirty transmitter uh, that's going to need to get its panel uh, cleaned and polished up anyway but this is freeing up these uh, these pots and uh, this is uh, freeing up these controls so I'm going through doing this on the outside and then I'll turn the transmitter over and where it's appropriate um, <coughs> like shafts for uh, switches and the tuning capacitors, I'll do it on the inside. Um, some of these things is uh, not too... <coughs> I really should take these knobs off and do this, but um, as I said, this is a preliminary shot here just to get these things um, freed up a little better. And um, <clears throat> Some of them, <clears throat> of course this is a crystal uh, socket cover, there's nothing to lubricate there. <clears throat> the, there's two or three things that cause these things to be stiff like this. Uh, there's uh, ball detents on the inside of, uh, of this one and some of these shafts. Um, <clears throat> and so you have to lubricate them from both sides. but. I say this is a this is a preliminary here. You want to get the you want to get the stuff moving through the the bezel to lubricate the shaft, and so you really have to hit it from both sides. <coughs> this is a quick and dirty one. Uh, even the switches do really want the lubricant in the switch too much, but even the Toggle switches can use a little bit. They get dirty. They need a little bit of lubrication. Um, you don't want to go nuts. You don't want to get uh, this lubricant in the in the pots. <coughs> now over here, the other thing I've done, and you should you should do this, is get yourself a manual and read through the beginning of the manual and look at the schematic. So you understand how the thing works and identify the controls on the chassis. Well, you can see that I've begun to mark these here. Um, it's been 20 years since I've overhauled a Valiant. I've done probably seven or eight of them in my life and the, the audio mods and all that stuff. But it's been 20 years and I needed to refamiliarize myself with, uh, with the layout, the circuit design, and the control locations. Um, so that when I was talking to you, I wasn't saying bullshit. <laughs> so, uh, you know, and you don't want to confuse things. Here's the, uh, uh, the bias uh, control pot for the modulator, and right next to it the uh, uh, bias control pot for the uh, final amplifier. So you need to keep those straight when you set the resting current for the modulator. You want to go straight to the right control, and when you set the bias for the... Uh, uh, for the final amplifiers, you want to get the right control there. These were both 
uh, very stiff and kind of frozen up. And uh, what I did, where did I put my damn screwdriver? What I ended up having to do was uh, put uh, a wrench on this to hold it still because it was so uh, so tight that it wanted to turn the whole pot. Now this one is uh, freeing up pretty well. Um, when we shoot the inside of the pot with uh, with deoxid, <coughs> this stuff, this is what you're going to use on all your uh, all your your pots, uh, the bearings on your tuning capacitors, all your uh, tube sockets, tube caps, uh, wafer switches, um, everything. You're going to use this deoxid stuff. So when we use the deoxid on the inside of these pots, um, that will continue uh, what we're beginning here, which is uh, uh, freeing them up and getting to move uh, move slu uh, smoothly. You don't want to put oil on the inside of your pots. Um, but uh, on these uh, shaft bezels, um, you do, and that's what happens. You get dissimilar. This one is really stiff, and it continues to be stiff. <coughs> so, you know, let's look at this, this clamp, clamper adjusting pot here. Uh, the clamper is just a little tube that, uh, that uh, buys us off the final. Uh, if you lose drive, it keeps the, uh, the plate current from going through the roof. So this clamper pot, the shaft was green. And uh, if you look at this uh, screw head right here, you can see it's green with corrosion. This shaft was green, and that pot was frozen up. And uh, what I did was uh, shot it with a little tarry flow and just let it sit for about five minutes. And then... Um, you can, uh, you get your choice on what you uh, want to do with these. If you take a pair of um, pliers like this and use it on that shaft, you're going to chew that shaft up. So the options are to uh, use a screwdriver on it, which is what I did. Uh, the other option is to get a knob and uh, tighten it down on there so you've got some, uh, uh, some more... Uh, leverage on it and do that but I uh, I did this and um, it did free itself right up what you got here is you get corrosion between the the, the bezel and the, or the ferrule and the shaft and they just uh, they corrode shut and a little bit of penetrating oil and a little bit of elbow grease will uh, loosen it up but once you get it loosened up you give it a little more uh, goop and let it uh, soak in there and you, you work it a few times and uh, it'll loosen up. Now back here <coughs> we've got the keyer pot. This is the adjustment. There's a keyer that keys the VFO and uh, this one was frozen up very stiff and you can see it's still stiff and so what I've been doing is soaking it and then exercising it like this and uh, I'm going to have to shoot the inside of the pot with uh, deoxid as well. Um, you never know just exactly what is causing uh, the binding up. And it can be internal in the pot and it can be this uh, shaft and, and, uh, and ferrule. So here's another case where we can shoot uh, the shaft. You can see that that's corroded and rusted. And, uh, it's dissimilar metals. It's a, I think it's a chrome steel shaft going through a brass be bezel, and that's a classic, uh, classic case of uh, dissimilar metals uh, corroding, and um, elect through electrolysis, a little moisture, a little dirt, and dissimilar metals, and you're going to get some corrosion. So here I am using using a lubricant on this uh, uh, bezel of this tuning capacitor. Now what you should know is that there's an electrical connection here uh, between the, uh, between the uh, center blades of this capacitor and this ferrule. So even though I'm going to use a lubricant on it now, I'm going to go back later with deoxid and I'm going to clean that lubricant out. What I'm do after now is to get the dirt and the corrosion out of there. But later, what I've got to do is 
make sure that that's a good electrical connection. And you notice I'm not even using the lubricant on the back half of it. I'm going to shoot it with some deoxid right now. There's, um, yeah, that helps. So there we go. I'll probably pull this uh, pull this knob off the front. There's a, a bezel on the front of the VFO, so it's a little little hard to get to uh, all of that. Sometimes you have to do this more than once. Um, you shoot it, you soak it, you free it up, you shoot it again, uh, exercise it a little bit, let it soak, and just some of it takes time. Um, you'll notice that we're getting lubricant all over the place. And I'm doing this now for a reason. This, this has had an initial cleaning of the chassis with soap and water, but not an absolute uh, you know, fine tooth comb cleaning with the toothbrushes and alcohol yet because I knew that I was going to be getting this penetrating uh, <coughs> lubricant on the chassis in various places as I free up these controls. And so uh, I'm doing this now because it will get uh, further cleaning and um, you know if I'd done everything to a Nance eyebrow and then went through with this penetrating lubricant um, I'd be kind of shooting myself in the foot. So let's turn this thing over now. Um, the other thing that's been going on here is during the cleaning process I've been making notes of various faults. In the process of cleaning things um, you're really also looking at every uh, bit of uh, the radio and noticing things that are wrong. Uh, like here there's a, a uh, <coughs> the bleed resistor for the power supply, these are the, the high voltage rectifiers here. Here's the bleeder resistor for the power supply, and it's missing one of these uh, spring standoff arms that holds it up here and lets it uh, lets it cool. And uh, so that's one of the things that's uh, noted on the list. Uh, these frozen controls were noted on the list. I read the label on the back to uh, to read the thing and notice that there's a dash one at the end of the model number which means that this transformer, this transmitter, was a kit. And so there's lots of little details uh, that you can glean. And you're also looking at things like all of these, uh, all these uh, uh, TVI preventing little coils here on the dial lights. Uh, you want to make sure that they're not uh, shorted out to uh, the chassis because that's the, uh, the filament voltages that cross those to run the dial lights. And so you want to just look at things like that. Uh, here we've got the, the uh, RF and the high voltage uh, on this wire going to the neutralizing capacitor. And here it goes through this shield. Well, you want to make sure that that's right square in the middle of that shield and not short it out because if you fire it up, you'll <laughs> short out the B+. Plus. So there's just, just little things like that that you're going to do as you're... Uh, working on the thing. Here's the missing um, plate cap on the uh, uh, for the modulator tube. So you just make no notes of all that stuff and <coughs> as you're going along <coughs> doing your overhaul you're going to refer to your list of, of faults. Um, we're going to do a standard recapping on this thing and we probably will do the audio mods on it to bypass the, uh, the clipper, although I may not do that. I haven't heard an unmodified Valiant on the air for so long that I think I may leave the clipper in this one. Uh, just because I, I want you guys to hear <laughs> what these things originally sounded like, and you don't hear them on the air unmodified anymore. But we're going to go through and do all of the, do all the recapping and um, we're going to do all the cleaning and, of the uh, uh, switches and, uh, and everything else. Uh, but along the way, we're also going to uh, be doing repairs. Uh, if we find modifications in here uh, or uh, things that are wrong, and here's, here's high voltage uh, filter caps uh, in the modulator section, and here's an electrolytic capacitor uh, just hanging there. So somebody has tried to put in new caps, uh, <laughs> they look pretty old, but they're new caps, and for some reason 
that that's one end of it. It's just just hanging out there in space. And here somebody has put in some some new filter caps in the uh, in the plate supply. And uh, you know we don't know whether they're any good. We don't know whether they're done right. I can see the end of it it's split. So you know those are going to go. And you know we're going to make a list of all the paper caps and electrolytics that we're going to replace. Uh, just shotgun all the old paper caps, all these green ones. Shotgun all the electrolytics. You can't trust them. This is a 1957 transmitter. It's 65 years old, almost 70 years old. And so there's just no point in the world in in uh, trying to use this with with. 70 year old electrolytic capacitors when we you know can buy nice brand new ones uh, for a couple of dollars a piece and uh, not risk our transformers um, <clears throat> so here we have all of the typical kinds of things that are stiff and need to be lubricated <clears throat> so here's a here's a ferrule and a bezel ferrule for the band switch and all, look, all of a sudden it's just so much easier to work. This one is kind of a bitch. This, this is a, oh boy, it's hard to get at. There we go. There's actually a band switch in the VFO. And this, uh, this little cob and block uh, deal here um, is what, uh, makes that uh, the band switch operate in the VFO while uh, the rest of it is uh, is changing the uh, uh, the driver and uh, final amplifier coils. So here we are. This is just lubrication. That's all this is. There's nothing electrical about this. Now here's the here's one of those ball and notch detents here on this uh, switch that the switch is in the extra loading capacitors and that's kind of a difficult thing to lubricate but we give it a little shot there and oh all of a sudden it's so much different so much different this should have a very <laughs> you know, a very smooth and sexy feel to it when everything is right um, these things are pretty nice mechanically, and when everything is clean and lubricated, uh, everything really works quite easily. Uh, you shouldn't have to force anything. Uh, it should just be uh, like... Now this thing is really stiff. This is, this is awful. Oh god, this is really awful. That's the mode switch. Now there's three ceramic switches on one shaft, and there's a little, I think there's a little ball detent Nergus buried way back in here. And you don't want to get this lubricant on the switches. Uh, the only thing you want to get on the switches to lubricate them is this deoxid. This stuff um, does lubricate your switches and your pots, uh, but it also removes corrosion and leaves a nice little kind of conductive film uh, on your switches. Uh, this is much better now. Um, if, you roll a, if you roll a video back, let's make sure that this thing is seeing what it's supposed to be seeing. Yeah, let's tilt this up just a little bit. So if you if you roll the video back just a little bit, you'll see how much effort I was putting into turning this mode switch, and uh, we haven't done anything to uh, make the uh, make the wipers in the in the switches be any better. But we've got the uh, we've got the shaft, the detent, and the bezel uh, <coughs> uh, much freer than they were. So as you go along and do this, it's a good idea to. Uh, wipe up, wipe up your excess lubricant. I've got quite a bit of it on the front of this panel, but you know what? <laughs> um, <clears throat> the, the paint on these panels gets so uh, dried out and dull from 
uh, from years and years, and then you do it with soap and water, and, and uh, you're going to end up putting something, some kind of an oil finish on the front panel to make it look better anyway if you're not going to repaint it, and I'd never do. So anyway, uh, big improvement, and that's what we're looking for. Um, this is just preliminary work we're doing here. Uh, as I said, now this is electrical. It's strictly mechanical. Oh, that's so much better. But the idea is just to make sure that everything is smooth. Um, you don't want to be going through and trying to clean all of these. We're going to put a lot of effort into cleaning these switches. Uh, we're not only going to shoot them with deoxid, but uh, we probably will take a sharpened uh, typewriter eraser and physically clean uh, the wipers uh, on, these, uh, on these switches. Uh, when a transmitter is this old, they get a film of old oil and dirt and sometimes cigarette smoke. I try not to work on smokers, but um, they get a lot of crud on there and sometimes you have to physically remove it you know, using this solvent lubricant. It's a combination of solvent and lubricant. Uh, but sometimes that is not enough. Uh, or, you know, you're using... Uh, electronic cleaner like this, which is difluoro, dichloro dichloromethane or something. But if you use this, you're not leaving behind any lubricant or protective film on the switch. You're just cleaning it. And this is good for getting rid of petrochemical crud. Uh, you know, old oil and grease and crud, but it's um, not going to leave you any lubrication. But sometimes you have to use some combination of a of uh, chemical cleaning and physical uh, cleaning and burnishing and that's where these you take this and put it in a really good uh, um, what do you call it um, pencil sharpener get a very fine point on it like a pencil and then you can get right in there and very carefully uh, clean the wafers but we're we're not there yet anyway before you do that, I and mean, when you're doing that, that cleaning of the wafers, you're going to be operating a switch a lot. So before you do that, you want to make sure that the switches are really operating easily and smoothly so you're not putting a lot of torque and force in, uh, on the thing, uh, just trying to do your cleaning. Um, so if you got excess oil in here um, you can just wipe it up you're going to get in here and clean again anyway um, generally the underside of these transmitters is pretty clean I'm seeing some spider webs and cobwebs and crap in here so you're going to go in here and, and gently clean maybe with a damp rag but we're not going to be using the toothbrushes and sponges and big slops of, of uh, soap and water like we did uh, we did on the top. So anyway, um, the combination here, and this is this is a preliminary cleaning uh, and lubrication, and the point of it is to make sure that everything works freely. Um, I have found transmitters where a shaft like this is uh, literally frozen in uh, the bezel and um, badly done or broken <coughs> and I've had to extract it and make a new shaft and uh, <coughs> so you want to find out if you're going to have to do something like that and if you have to do it you get a piece of brass tube this is this is a size too small but you get a piece of brass tube and you can make a new shaft uh, these shafts for these uh, wafer switches have flats on them, so you've got to get one of those from another another switch. But these these round shafts like this, uh, you can fabricate them, and I've I've done that on Globe Kings and Globe Champs, and I've done it on Valiants, and um, you know usually you don't have that problem unless the thing is you know really been in a in a damp environment, and uh, those kind of transmitters can be be a struggle but uh, 
but you can do it. I've taken apart VFOs and built new shafts for them and put them together and made them go again. So uh, you're not making any more of these transmitters. So if you want to, now here, here's a typical thing you find. Now here's the um, push to talk uh, transmit switch. And here's a wire soldered on one side of that switch and it's just cut. It's going nowhere. So that's the kind of thing that you see in the process of doing this cleaning you you find problems. So it's got push to talk XMT switch, transmit switch, cut wire. And you just make that note so that you don't have to remember it and you don't forget it. In the process of doing this cleaning, doing this lubrication, you're going to find these faults and you're going to write them down. And when it comes time to uh, go through the thing and do the work, you've got yourself a checklist. You've got some orderly way to do it. Now the other, the other side of this is you're going to go to your parts list in the manual. Doing this without the manual is pretty much... Uh, pretty silly thing to do. But anyway, you go to the manual and here's your list of capacitors. And you're going to go through here and it's going to say paper capacitor. You're just going to go through the list and you're going to find all the paper capacitors. You're going to write down what, what number it is, uh, what the value of it is, half microfarad, 400 working volt paper condenser and it's C89. So you're going to end up with a list like this of all the capacitors you're going to replace. It's a paper capacitor, it's an electrolytic capacitor. You're going to change it. So you make a list. So by the time you get in here and start working, you're going to have a list of all the parts you're going to replace. All, all the paper and electrolytic capacitors, you're going to have a list of that. Um, you probably are going to go through and you should go through and measure some critical resistors, uh, your meter resistors, your meter um, dropping resistors, uh, you really want to measure those and get them right. These valiants are famous for having those uh, metering resistors like for the plate current uh, or the modulator current, those values change and then your meter readings are changed and you can't figure out why you're not getting 130 or 40 watts output that you should get and it's because the meter reading is wrong and you're not really loading it up right. So you're going to end up with a list of parts you're going to change. You're going to end up with a list of um, problems that you've encountered uh, in the cleaning process that you've got to repair. And um, then there's going to be other things you're going to do. Um, typically what I will do is measure the primary and the secondary resistances of the modulation transformer. Make sure there's not a problem with it. Uh, you don't want to go through this whole uh, Marianne here overhauling the whole thing and not know that your modulation <laughs> transformer is bad and you have to change it out. So uh, there's just some things that you're going to do like that. And uh, so anyway, I think that's pretty much it for this video. Um, after we've done all this lubrication, uh, the next thing I'm going to do is go uh, back around with my Deoxit D5 and um, probably give all these wafer switches and pots an initial uh, shot of deoxid and exercise them some. Uh, I'm still going to go back and clean uh, these wafer switches and stuff, but I'm going to give them all a shot and let time do its job because uh, some of this stuff, uh, like the, the penetrating lubricant I put on the shafts of these, uh, of these uh, pots down here, R61 and 62, the the bias pots for the uh, <coughs> for the uh, modulator and the PA um, that just has to soak in and, and do its thing. I'm going to shoot these pots now uh, if I can get into them. I think I'm actually going to pop the top off of that pot. I think, but I can. So anyway, I've got to turn that over and exercise those. But shooting these pots and switches and letting it sit um, is a good thing to do. 
because um, some of this takes time. Some of this takes time. Now there are little finger contacts on these um, 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 variable capacitors and um, you want those to be clean. So now I've, I've shot these switches and I'm just going to, let's see another one in here, get to it. So I'm just going to exercise these switches, wipe the contacts a little bit. Same with the, uh, I don't think I can get into that uh, plate switch. So this just starts to wipe those connections and clean them up a little bit. And Sorry. Going on here. Not smart enough to use a spray can anymore. So we'll come back later with our magnifying uh, shop glasses and look closely at all of these contacts and see if we're getting a bright little uh, wire there where the wiper is uh, going across the wafer and making a contact or whether it just really looks gungy. These feel good now. Uh, all the controls uh, feel good, and so that's uh, that's a very good thing. Okay, I think that's uh, that's it. The next thing I'll do is uh, I'll go up here and there's some controls up on the top, some pots and switches that I will will shoot with the deoxid, and um, I think I'll go around with my paper towel and wipe up any excess crud I've gotten in here, but. Uh, that's, uh, that's the next step after the initial cleaning.